Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Huda. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa al-aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa la udwana illa ala zalimeen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidi al-awaleen wa al-akhireen nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are as follows. 002 then 0109518 alternatively i code 002 then 0100546923 and the whatsapp numbers area code 0013478060025 and finally area code 0013614891503 um as you all know that tomorrow inshallah is going to be the beginning of Rajab. A lot of people have been circulating uh, a hadith in respect of the virtues of a certain supplication in the beginning of Rajab, on the first day of Rajab. And uh, I don't want to quote this a hadith, but subhanAllah, uh, while the social media should be utilized and used for uh, good work, spreading genuine message, authentic a hadith, some people uh, are very negligent of their duty of verifying what they publish, what they share, what they like uh, before they share it with others. There is no such hadith that tells that if you say the following supplication in the first day of Rajab or you send the following congratulations to as many people on the, be on the beginning of the month of Rajab, your sins will be forgiven or any virtues whatsoever. The matter of fact is that uh, the month of Rajab is one of the four sacred months whom uh, or which the Almighty Allah referred to in uh, Surah At-Tawbah, uh, number 36, uh, chapter number 9, when Allah the Almighty says, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ منها أربعة حرم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم. So the ayah stated that since Allah created the heavens and the earth, He has divided the time into twelve lunar months. Those months which we know Muharram and we know the month of Rajab, we know the month of Dhul Qa'dah, we know the month of Dhul Hijjah. These lunar months. Four out of them are sacred, which means that you're not supposed to commit sins or even contemplate the idea of committing sins during this blessed time. Three of them are consecutive, which is Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah, and the first month of the new year, which is Muharram. Three consecutive Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. And there is one month by itself, which is known as the month of Rajab. It is right before Sha'ban and eventually before uh, Ramadan. So what is so special about the month of Rajab? We'll discuss it inshallah as we go by after we take a few calls. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ali from Pakistan, welcome to Ask Uda. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Salah. Um, my question was very simple. Uh, can you share some tips for people to be consistent in their ibadah? What I mean by that is some days I'm waking up for tahajjud, going to the masjid for fajr, praying, saying duha, and next day I'm barely getting up in time and rushing to say fajr at my home. So how can we be more consistent? Now, Barakallahu feek Ali, and I think this question concerns all of us, beginning with myself, not only uh, Ali from Pakistan. The greatest advice in this regard is number one, listen to what the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith which is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha when the messenger of Allah was asked about what is the best deed, he said, Adwamuhu wa inqal. The one which is consistent even if it is a little. ma tutiqun. So when you start an act of worship, begin with something that you can afford, even if it is little, and do it on a regular basis, then gradually you can add to it. But if the person hears a khutbah or reads a hadith, 
about the virtues of let's say Qiyamul Layl. So the first night he prays for a couple hours, I can assure you the next night he's not going to wake up even for Fajr because he took it hard upon himself. Do of the good deeds and the acts of worship, the voluntary acts of worship, whatever you can afford. And the best of deeds are those which are consistent even if they are little. It's not about the quantity. Secondly, obviously, a dua. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam most frequently recited dua was, Ya Muqallib Al-Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi Ala Deen. Oh Allah, the one who changes the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. Thirdly, what we need to take care of most, and uh, we do not miss with it, is the fard. So if you stand up for a whole night in tahajjud, and you miss the fajr prayer, it's worthless. So make certain you pray fajr on time, and since you're in Pakistan, there are a lot of masajid around, pray in the masjid, in congregation, that is a priority. Then you can add to it the nawafil, of course. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Fatima from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather passed away and my grandmother received his pension. So my uncle pays my grandmother's bills uh, with that pension. And he also uses some for himself. I just wanted to know if that is right for him to use my grandmother's pension for himself. Type. Let me uh, explain first of all. When your grandmother lost her uh, husband, yeah, and your grandfather, and she receives a pension, uh, this is hers. So if she approves anyone to take out of it, it's 100% lawful. So if your uncle is looking after her, paying her bills, taking care of her, and she doesn't mind giving him, she knows that he's taking that much, maybe because he's in need. Maybe because he's devoting some of his time to look after her and she doesn't mind, then it's permissible. But if he's taking care of her, this is his duty. And he doesn't have any right to take out of her pension, out of her allowance without her permit and without her knowing and approving. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'la. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yaseen from India, welcome to Ask Wada Yaseen. Yes, yeah, sure. Sheikh, I had a question. No. My question is, is it uh, permissible Is it permissible to work in the EMI-based call operating uh, job? And also, is it permissible to buy products on EMI-based? What is EMI-based? I know the call center where people call and, uh, you know, if, if you're working in a call center to facilitate some business, even if you're in a different country, what, but what is that uh, platform base that you've mentioned? Yeah, it is a call operating system. Uh, we need to call uh, the customers and convince them to buy the products on e uh, EMI based. Okay, if the, if the goods are okay and lawful to sell, then your job is okay. As, uh, as a salesperson, you're supposed to promote your commodity, even by calling in. This is one of the means of advertisement. So if you call the customers and you tell them we have this and this and that and you speak about the advantages of buying the, your product as long as you're not lying nor exaggerating and the product or the commodity is halal then your job is lawful. Okay? Yeah, sure. yeah okay, Sheikh. Jazakumullah. Oh, Asin from uh, India. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Saeed from Kenya. Welcome to Ask with the Saeed. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Saeed, please proceed on. Okay, inshallah, today I'm going to ask two questions. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, my, my first question is Can someone play football with someone who, has, who hasn't covered his hour? Okay, second question. Yeah, my second question is, can someone can someone do riyah in things that that aren't acts of worship? 
Like what? Said. Can someone do? I got yeah. a question. Like what? Give me an example. Like uh, when he's playing football. Okay, and he wants to impress the viewers, the crowd, correct? Hello? Sa yeah, Saeed. Said, like a soccer player who wants to impress the crowd, correct? Yeah, yeah. Type. Or even his coach. Okay. So, uh, 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 are you still on the line? Saeed? Okay. His first question, can, can I play soccer with somebody in a team who's shown his aura? Well, it depends which aura you mean. Because if we're talking about from the knees to the belly button, this is what the vast majority of the scholars have decided. This is the aura for men before others, whether men or women. But there is another opinion which says that the thighs are not aura. But if you get involved in a team or a game, well, you know that you would hold the crowd sitting and they will waste one salah and two because they're attending the game. Then you, the referee, the entire team, and the, uh, the coaches, everyone is blameworthy because you've wasted the prayer time for yourselves and for others as well. Then I shouldn't be a part of that. You're going to say, but uh, Mo Salah does this and this and that. He's not a sheikh. He's not a scholar. He's a soccer player. May Allah bless him. But when you ask a sheikh, when you ask a da'iya, what is the right thing? He's supposed to share with you what is the right thing. Whether you do it or you don't, this is your responsibility. And everyone should shoulder their responsibility. Those who sit in the stadiums, watch the aura and even aura for women and they miss one and more prayer times are blameworthy and they are committing major sins and there is a big fear that if people die in this condition that's a terrible conclusion to their lives and the prophet sallallahu said innama al-a'malu bil khawatim deeds are by their conclusions assalamu alaikum lorenzo from italy assalamu alaikum lorenzo طيب. Please try again, Lorenzo. No problem. Abdul Hakim from Nigeria. Welcome to Ask Wada Abdul Hakim. Barakallahu feek, Sheikh. Wa feekum barak, Akhi. Uh, Sheikh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sheikh, uh, well, it's funny that my, um, my question is also related to football. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh, the thing is, the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he said that there should be no prizes for competitions except in archery mm -hmm. in camel racing and in horse racing mm -hmm. so then the ulama they highlighted that uh, we can also include quran competitions and the racing of airplanes and ships on both competitions mm -hmm. because in, in in this hadith because it can it can help to strengthen the ummah mm -hmm. so my question is can football be included in this prize uh, competitions tournaments since it's since it's a physical sport and if football cannot be included, then does this mean that all these football leagues around the world, like the English Premier League, the La Liga, because they involve a prize, they involve winning something or winning money or winning a trophy. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that these football leagues are haram because they have a trophy and a prize related to it? And does this mean that watching it is also haram? Barakallah barak. Not necessarily, because... What he said concerning the kind of phrases that the Prophet ﷺ fi hafrin aw naslin aw hafir which means uh, in the horse race, camel race and in the archery because these kind of sports would help and assist in building the physical fitness of the Muslim individual as well as preparing them for the battlefield whenever it is needed but also in the useful matters, whether in the Quran, in the Hadith, in poetry, what is 100% haram if one of the teams, when he, when, if, if all the players or the teams have to pay, and then 
the loser loses everything and the winner takes the prize which is paid for by the losers team and his team as well so this is 100% gambling maser haram and eventually the viewers who bet on one of the teams so if there is any bet on any of these sports where people pay and then only the winner or whose team will win they get the prize this is gambling as well but if the state if the country is given prizes to the players or to the winners that is permissible barakallahu feek akhi assalamu alaikum shaheen from the uk assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam sheikh sheikh i have sorry again two questions uh, my first regarding is uh, regarding zakat um, can you uh, give zakat to somebody who um, who whose income is low but they have little bit of savings and they use that saving in the winter months when they can't earn enough money um when their business is low so uh, that's the first question and other question is um if somebody becomes a jobless but they have their own house to live and a small property um a small property which they can sell uh, to do something but they don't want to sell it but can you give the zakat to that person who is jobless but they have roof on their head but they have a small property which they can sell to manage their uh, monthly uh, you know expenses but they don't want to sell it because they say oh we bought it for some other purpose if i sell it like this i'm the money might get wasted so mm, so i'm not, Uh, it's just a question can we you give the zakat to that person zakillahu khairan when somebody whether is jobless or has a job and has uh, a house to live in but his income is barely enough for himself and the family to provide like hand to mouth or to break even or barely to meet their ends are they eligible for zakah yes they are eligible for zakah Who is not considered faqir or miskin? A person who doesn't have anything, whether for six months to cover their needs for six months or even less. So in this case, this person, if the person doesn't have anything or if the person has a little bit that is sufficient for them for about six months, they're still eligible for zakah. But once the person have the means, and has an income that is sufficient for them and they make saving out of it and they also have enough saving that reaches the nisab the value of 85 gram of gold or 20 mithqal of gold so they themselves pay zakah in this case they are not eligible for zakah others are eligible for zakah those who do not have anything recently you have been seen millions of muslims live in refugee camps the Syrian brothers and sisters and we have seen their own children dying and the elders freezing in the tents in this extremely terrible weather so obviously those people are more worthy than a person who has a car and he has a property and he can sell it but you know no I'm not gonna sell it I'm waiting for a higher price to come or whatever so the priorities also will determine who is more in need and eligible for zakah respected system sometimes in the states when we look around and it is a zakah time we have people he has a house he has a car but he doesn't have a job so even though he has a house and has a car but we pay them their zakah well we also know that back home there are people who are homeless who go to sleep without dinner so is it permissible to ship the zakah overseas and to pay those people who are more in need absolutely yes i would like to add it is not the kind of job or the title which determines whether the person is eligible for zakah or not because wallahi a person could be an md a doctor and eligible for zakah whenever he is an honest and a trustworthy doctor He graduated, he doesn't stretch out his hand to the haram or uh, abortion cases or 
you know, uh, the unlawful cosmetic surgery, even if he's an anesthesiologist. He doesn't prescribe unnecessary medication so that the pharmaceutical company will pay him. So his salary is lesser than a salary of a teacher in elementary school. But Sheikh is a doctor. That's why I said the title does not mean anything because he could be a doctor. He could be a headmaster, a headmistress. He could be a dean of a college and he's eligible for zakah. So the financial status is what determines whether the person is eligible for zakah or not. Assalamu alaikum. Faqirullah from Ireland, welcome to ask what a faqir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. Ahlan wa sahlan. Brother, I have one question. One of the sisters asked me uh, to ask some mashayikh, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, from where somebody shared your video mm -hmm. and a life come to me and then uh, I called you. I, I was wondering, well, how can I ask someone? Yeah. The, the sister had uh, twice, uh, she had the uh, um, baby and the baby died in nearly eight months or seven months like that. And she almost nearly died as well. And then she asked, now the third time she uh, have uh, having a baby, but the baby's just she got pregnant probably two weeks or one week, and then uh, she wondering uh, if if she going to get the birth again, she probably dies. It is uh, possible that this one is not for two or one week or uh, do abortion or is a sin or don't do it. Got your question, Fakirullah. Got your question. In this case, there must be a council meeting between the the doctor, the obstetrician, and the sheikh. So if the doctor said, not necessarily the obstetrician, maybe the sister has heart disease, so we need to consult the cardiologist or the pulmonist or the uh, uh, renologist. We ask, can she stand pregnancy? Can she bear a child? When the doctor says, yes, she will be okay then it's not permissible to abort the baby. When any of these doctors trustworthy said, how dare you get pregnant? I told you so many times you cannot con uh, uh, conceive because if you conceive, you will die. In this case, even if the child is healthy, we give precedence to the life of the mother. So priority and superiority is for saving the mother. So the Sheikh will just give you the general ruling, Akhi Faqir. And then you need to consult an honest and a trustworthy doctor. Her doctor who would say, no, she cannot conceive. She cannot get pregnant. And if she does, she will die. In this case, you got my verdict already. Then it is permissible to abort the baby. But if not, and if she can, then it's not permissible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad from the USA, welcome to Ask Uda. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Does Quran uh, have to be read only in uh, Arabic? Taib. When you say it, when you say I read the Quran, then you must read it in the language it was revealed with. But when you say I'm studying the Quran, I can read the meaning in English, in French, in Urdu, in Persian. In Chinese, it doesn't matter. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So, Quran recited properly the way it was revealed with the ahkam, with the articulation points, and the characteristics of the letters. So, this is Quran. But when you read the meaning, oh, it says, All praises be to Allah, the Lord of everything that exists. That is the meaning. I'm studying the Quran. You don't say in the name of Allah. You don't sing it. You don't recite it. You're just reading the meaning. So if you're talking about Qira'atul Quran, whereupon you get 10 good deeds for each single letter you recite, then it must be in Arabic. You can alongside with it, you read the meaning and you have a dual benefit. Barakallah feek. May Allah bless you all the viewers. It's time to take a short break. And inshallah we'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. 
our phone numbers should appear on the screen if you have any question please do not hesitate to dial any of the following numbers and we have sister Fahmida from India on the line assalamu alaikum welcome to ask with Fahmida Alaikum assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dr. Sheikh Salah Go ahead uh, I have a couple of questions mm -hmm. and my first question is um, how can a woman who regularly prays uh, in tahajjud how can she uh, make up during her menses what acts of worship can she do uh, during her menses uh, during the Tahajjud period. Thank you, Fahmida. For and my second question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your second Sorry? question, please. Yeah, yeah. My second question is: um, uh, a believing woman, she she regularly play, prays. She uh, she uh, fasts, and she she looks after her family, and um, she is sometimes. Um, been uh, guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Divine guidance has been given by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this sometimes happens when she is doing, she, she may be doing something wrong. So she gets guidance and then she realizes that this is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, what happens is, uh, uh, can she share, share the, this these uh, little incidents, th this little inspiration, uh, no, an uh, act of happiness, can she share this with other family members apart from her husband? Okay. Guy, your questions, Fahmida from India. First of all, whenever a woman is experiences, experiencing her menses, obviously she does not pray. No, does she fast? And she does not perform tawaf as well. But... Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu said to Aisha radiyallahu anha as she entered Mecca to perform Hajj with him and she started crying so he assured her when he figured that she started her period he said if Ali ma yaf'alu al-hajj ghayra an la tatufi do everything that the pilgrim would normally do except tawaf so what does the pilgrim do? Zikr, istighfar, dua, supplication, tasbih, tahmeed, right? This is as far as this kind of worship, which, it, which we may think it is affected uh, by the menses. Giving any charity, visiting the sick, praying for others, even reciting Quran according to and revising Quran according to many of uh, the scholars. So you can make up for not praying tahajjud by waking up at the same time and making istighfar or reading Quran or supplicating. You know that a great part of worship at tahajjud time is what? What Allah the Almighty referred to in Surah al Zariyat when He said, Kanu qalilam min al ma yahja'oon. This is as far as they used to pray at night and they sleep there. Then Al Ashar, right before Fajr, Wabil Ashari hum yastaghfirun. So istighfar during this part of the night, which is tahajjud time, is also a great act of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admired those who do it and He promised them with jannati and na'im. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for having this concern. When a person is having ups and downs and then becomes rightly guided, yani I'm just summarizing your question. Can this person, if she's a woman, share this incident with other people other than her husband? You may share it with anyone provided, don't mention your name. Say, I know of a person who used to do this. So if it is something, a sin that I used to commit, do not tell anyone about it. Keep it between you and Allah the Almighty. Even in the course of teaching others, because others will not forget that you will commit in this sin. Keep it between you and Allah. So speaking about the third person will do. When you say, I know of someone who used to do this, then Allah has guided her or guided him. So away from yourself. Barakallah feek. And even if it is something admirable, again, 
say I know of someone in order to maintain the maximum level of sincerity. Barakallahu feeki. Fahmida from India. Assalamu alaikum. Medina from Belgium. Welcome to Ask Wada. Assalamu alaikum, Medina. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just have a question. For example, I work and my husband work and uh, the salary uh, goes to our family account. And uh, actually it is, uh, I, I don't get, I get some money, but uh, it is not actually even the half of my salary. And I wanted to know uh, how can I, I mean, I, I read a lot about it. And I know that it is uh, not permissible for husband to use uh, wife money without her permission. But I think he, he assumed that I agree with it. And I'm afraid to tell, I mean, to make argument and it is, can be reason of argument between us. And so I don't know how I solve this issue. Type. I got your question. Respected sister from Belgium. And subhanallah, today and yesterday, when I was driving today, I was managing a case like this exactly. But I sent the answer in writing a long article because it needed explanation for everyone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بَعْضَهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ From this ayah, we understand that supporting the family financially is solely the responsibility of the husband, whether the wife is rich or richest. She is not required to spend out of her own money on the husband, own or on her children or the household. But the fact of the matter, if the wife is a working person, we look into the condition to differentiate the hukm based on the following fact. Prior to getting married, the wife said to the husband, look, I'm a doctor, I'm a gynecologist, I'm an accountant, I'm a teacher, I love my job and I'm going to continue working. Is this okay with you? Yes, honey, no problem. It is okay with me. Then in this case, she works and she keeps her money for herself because he agreed to the stipulated condition from the beginning. Well, actually, we never spoke about it, but after marriage that I realized my husband needs a hand and his income is insufficient. So I started working to support him financially. Then may Allah bless you. As long as the job is halal, it is permissible. And then... What you chip in to support your husband in spending on the family, including on you, is based on your allowance. Whatever you approve, 10%, 20%, 40% of your income, whatever you guys agree to, and you say, I'm okay with that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it is not permissible for the husband to take anything of the wealth of the wife, including the money that he has given her whether as gifts or as dowry. وَلَا تَأْخُذُوا مِمَّا آتَيْتُمُهُنَّ شَيْئًا Which means, and it is not permissible to take out of the money that you give them. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَكُمْ أَن تَأْخُذُوا مِمَّا آتَيْتُمُهُنَّ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَيَّ خَافَ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ So it is not permissible for you to take from the dowry that you give them anything. Unless if she willingly decided to give you any part of it or she give it away entirely to you without putting pressure on her. All of that adds up in order to give up the conclusion. If the wife happily supported her husband in order to support the family financially by any percentage of her owning and positions or earning, may Allah bless her. And she's not required to do that. Only in one condition. If there was no stipulated condition in the beginning. And now because she likes to go out and work and prove herself. No problem. And she's making, mashallah, a lot of money. Uh, because she's busy. She had to hire somebody to babysit the kids. To raise the kids. In this case, he has the right to say, honey, you pay this woman who is babysitting the kids. The babysitter or the nanny. Why? Because this is solely your task. 
but I have to work, I have to prove myself. So if you leave home and you bring somebody else to cover for you, then you pay her. Only in cases of dispute or otherwise if the man, alhamdulillah, is financially capable, doesn't have to worry about any of that, whatever he spends on the family is definitely an act of charity from him. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَاعْلَمْ يَا سَعْدْ أَنَّكَ لَنْ تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ بِهَا أَجْرًا حَتَّى اللُّقْمَةَ تَضَعُهَا فِي فِي امْرَأَتِكَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, one of the ten heaven-bound companions, when he decided to give away all his wealth fi sabilillah, he said, no, 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 no. Then he kept on, you know, reducing the amount until he said, it's okay to give away one-third, not more than one-third. Even one-third is a lot. And yes, Sa'ad, I want you to understand that any amount of money you spend on your family, as long as you seek the pleasure of Allah out of that, you'll be rewarded as it is an act of charity from you on your family, including the food that you feed your wife. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us what is best. Assalamu alaikum. Leah from the UK, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a two part question. Mm -hmm. uh, the first part is my husband has left me, he abandoned me, and he sent me a text message saying, I give you the luck, I give you the luck, I give you the luck. So, do I accept that now and start my idda? And the second part is that when we were married, I medically stopped my menses. Mm. And I now have that medical um, thing removed, so I'm no longer stopping my menses, but it can take up to a year for it to return. So do I have to wait the year and then wait for my menses to return and then do my idda? Or can I just do the three months of idda? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered your uh, question in the ayah of Surah Al-Talaq with regards to Allahi lam yahidm and uh, Allahi yaisna min al -mahid. We have two cases, either a woman who experienced her menopause or a woman who did not experience the period yet. When she's divorced, three lunar months from the day that he divorced you. And since you've, you've been acknowledged with the eternal divorce, the final divorce with a text message, it's an effective divorce. From that day, you begin immediately three lunar months and then afterward, you're free. If you want to get married, you're absolutely free because you're not married anymore. Uh, if the period is interrupted, so it goes and it comes, okay? And it's not like, you know, in years, rather due to medical condition, uh, it is delayed for a whole month or whatever, then you wait for the three periods. But if somebody had hysterectomy and the uterus is, is removed, then automatically we go for the idda of three lunar months. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Umm Hamza from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Can you hear me? Yes, clearly, mashallah, Umm Hamza. Go ahead. What is your question, Sister? Sheikh, first of all, Jazakallahu khair, you are on your team. I learned so much from you. You may not know me, but I make you dua because I learned so much. Thank you I so much. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. um, one is, uh, I, I did uh, Sadaqatul Jariya for my father. And I'm wondering, like, when you pay Sadaqatul Jariya, do you have to, like, separate between you and your parents? And also, can you give Sadaqatul Jariya a parent that's living? And my other question is, I live in USA, and I have the ability to you know, uh, become uh, ambassador for my religion. And I'm wondering, can a woman do da'wah? You know, alhamdulillah, through me, Allah guide few of my friends. But I feel like if they go to the mosque, Sheikh, they don't have a support group for comforts. And I'm not convert. I was born and raised. And I don't have da'wah courses, and I don't know how to support them. So I just keep on praying that Allah supports them. So I'm wondering if women can do da'wah, and if so, is there the courses I can take? Thank you. Masha'Allah. Um Hamza from the USA, thank you for your dua, for your appreciation and your compliment. Secondly, Alhamdulillah, I have a huge da'wah team, over 400. Most of them are women and girls, mashallah. So of course, women can give da'wah and can do a follow-up da'wah courses with reverts and with new Muslims. 
And if you leave your number, I'm sure one of uh, our teams, inshallah, one of the sisters would reach out to you and share with you our courses and what you can do. We'll be more than happy to do that, inshallah. So I would kindly request my assistant to uh, take your number and connect you with one of the sisters, inshallah. As far as the sadaqatul jariya, as long as you know what the jariya means, that you invest in something that its benefit is continuous, so that the reward will be continuous as well. Can I do sadaqah jariya on behalf of others? Yes. Even if they are not dead yet, if they are not late, they are still alive, the answer is yes. Do I separate in the intention when you say, Oh Allah, I'm putting 50 grands in building this masjid on behalf of my father, living or dead, accepted. What about me? Inshallah, you will get a similar word because you are the person who invested. But initially, you've donated the reward of your charity, whether immediate or continuous, uh, for your father, your mother, both of whom or for whomever. May Allah accept from all of us, brothers and sisters, who've come to the end of today's edition of Ask Wada. Until next week, I leave you all in the care of Allah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen